the saints of divine word international ministries founded and presided by my own brother his eminence bishop dr kofi adontem wharton the wife give a clap to jesus it is an honor and a privilege to be called upon to give the introduction for this event and tonight organized under His Eminence Bishop Dr. Kofi Adontim Wharton, the Divine Privilege Home presents the United States President Volunteer Service Award and Fundraising Gala Lunch. And uh, of note, I have to recognize a very important guest again from the screen, the United States Volunteer Service Award. President is here in our midst, His Excellency Dr. Devon Bannister. <laughs> Sir, welcome. God is uniting you and I, the body of Christ, and the community and the society to come together to become one family. And we are here tonight that our clergy and dear honorable Nananum Ahimafu, whom we really adore, you especially, who is here, to show great love of gratitude in our giving and, of course, to the great cause of work. Our dear Papa, husband, brother, uncle, founder of Divine World International Ministries, His Eminence, Bishop Dr. Kofi Adontain Watin, to be able to continue to expand humanitarian help widows, orphanages, the less fortunate people in shelters, people who don't have, and to also expand the kingdom work. As for me, it's a privilege for me to be part here, and I believe that you and I, we are witnesses to what is happening through this ministry of this great man of God. And therefore, it is of beauty and humility to come help the work of God as it is written in the Bible. Let us stand up to rebuild the kingdom of God. Nehemiah 4 8. So, therefore, we are here to continue to build the kingdom of God that God has called Bishop Dr. Kofi Adontim Boatin. Not only in Virginia, not only in the United States, not only in Ghana, but almost every part of the world. And your giving, please, I humbly ask, the heavens will bless you. As you know, any giving we give and then giving to an orphanage or caring for a human being, for even a soul, God. We will replenish whatever you have given in hundredfold. Bishop Dr. Kofi Adontim Watson is a great man of God. Period. I know this great man since many years, all the way from the early 2000s. And today, for us to be here, and you and I to be here to attest to all of you. Here in Asanda, that this man is filled with humility, kindness, passion, care, 
love, and more especially, the anointing of God rest upon him. We must hold, encourage him and the wife and to continue to do more for God because the blessings comes to you. And as such, I have to use this opportunity to thank all the saints under him in Divine World International Ministries. You have done so well. May you clap for yourself. My idea. You have done well. From all the pastorate to the least. Beloved, I express thanks to you expressively for able to make it here because Nandanum during weekends are very busy. Ahima, you are busy. Nandanum, piao. Give a clap to them. Piao. Well, the word piao, those who don't understand, is you are majestic. Piao. Say piao. No, no, no. Please. Let's make this function very beautiful. Souls are dying. Let's rescue the perishing. Let's put hope in people. Bishop Dr. Kofi Adontin Bwati. We all have seen on the newspapers, on the videos, building ultra modern facilities, charitable homes in Ghana for that boy, little, that young little girl who didn't have a father and mother. I've watched the clips emotionally. And the joy in their face, he creates hope, he's creating future, he's creating faith, he's creating success for their lives. And the smiles, even these children, they are forgetting that they start to say, their fathers and mother, because now they have a great father, Bishop Dr. Kofi Adontem Water. On this note, I would like you to stand up and give a great ovation to this great man of God and the wife. Well done, Bishop. Well done, Bishop. Well done, Bishop. And I will have to Bishop to come forward here as we keep clapping. Be sure I don't say what it. Some may not know you. Come. Well done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have done so well. Great, great, great. Run the chair. Run the chair. Run the chair. Run the Know this man is so humble and he doesn't like paparazzi things, but he can dress, he is handsome. Let's clap for him. Well done, well done, well done. All right, I think I'll be leaving soon. I want to let you laugh, Papa. God bless you in all your humility and your fashionata, which you'll teach me later. Your, the children you are carrying for when I watch the video. And they named their surname after you. What is your name? I'm Benjamin Adonte Boatin. What is your name? I'm Kofi Adonte Boatin. What is your name? I'm Kwame Adonte Boatin. What is your name? Matilda Adonte Boatin. And whilst I was watching the clip, I cried. I said to myself, when future history is written, when posterity speaks, because you have done this, the heavens will remember you. Because you have done this, man of God, I bow before thee.
to give hope and faith and give that comfortability to ultra a modern orphanage house with air conditions that many of us are sleeping with France and for the love the money and the toil we are here to honor you and I know God will touch and bless to give you the financial resources to feed them Bishop we salute you and with your dear beautiful wife because without any man successful no, if no man is there and she has been there for you and the church I'm proud of that and today we are here because this fundraising should become another level fundraising and beloved let us give from our hearts you are not giving to this great bishop you are giving to the kingdom of God I know times are hard but let us remember that somebody is crying somewhere sleeping outside somebody needs a father a mother and God has placed upon the heart of this great man doing it on a level not simple shelter whereby excuse me with all way where I mean people just go oh it's uncomfortable but classic like a hotel so please beloved we are here tonight to make sure that the burden is not upon him alone no 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 Ahima, a sophomore, my sister and brother, we can do this. And let's do this to cause the glory of God. Because all things being said, all glory goes to God. Let us make sure that he alone doesn't bear the burden. I know many of you have been given. Let's give more. For it is a blessing to give than to receive. God bless you, Papa. Bishop Dunton, Kofi Boateng, for your love. And I'll be coming here every time. Nanam, thank you. We salute you all. And you all, God bless you. Thank you very much. Run the track! Run the track! Run the track! Thank you for that wonderful piece. I'm short of words. The other time the psalmist said, and I love this song, rescue the perishing, care for the dying. I'm singing it with you because we are going to do this together. But before we rescue the perishing and we care for the dying, let's introduce Nana Berima and Pofu Redu and the wife. He's the Achim Bomahini and President of Chiefs and Queens Association, Nana Yamau Akwaba. We are going to show a short documentary on these kids that we are talking about. Most of us have gathered our monies and our bits and, bees, bits and pieces. Sometimes we think about putting up structures for our children. Sometimes we think about putting up structures for ourselves back home. But somebody has decided that, look, I am going to do it for the people out there. It is not an easy thing. But tonight, I want you to understand. But the children that you are putting up that property for, the children that you have saved up for, it is Elohim who will decide to protect them. Sometimes we put up mighty buildings and our children when they grow up they don't even want to use it they abandon it because the styles and the architectural designs are out of place they don't even want it but tonight some of us are looking for the fruit of the womb some of us are believing God that our children will not go wayward even to have life to see your children's children it is just by grace DJ Give us a music. Nasi, let us. I hope you have. Ah, see, da, the free mark on your munina, me da was you. Wouldn't it be? Hey, I say, meaning so bear me say, and DJ, my young, whilst we prepare the clip. 
If it's not ready, can we see the documentary on the kids, please? This is why we are here. I think we've been selfish. The people on the high table cannot see. Hallelujah. Okay. Celebrate Jesus with me tonight. Hallelujah. All right, so this song is my testimony. Amen. Can I share it with you tonight? All right, let's go. I am who I am because of you. If it had not been for you, tell me where would I be? I was lost and sinking deep in sin. But you reached out your hand and rescued me. No one else can do the things you do. There's no one else but you. I am who I am because of you. If it had not been for you, tell me where would I be? I was lost and sinking deep in sin. But you reached out of your hand and rescued me. No one else can do the things you do. Oh God, there's no one else but you. So I see this. Oh no, yeah. Oh no, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Luigi McLean. Never thought that you could love someone like me. You gave up your life for me, yeah. You even go on and call me your very own. Your very own. So grateful for your love. Your no one can do the things you do for me. Never thought that you could love someone like me. You gave up your life for me, yeah. You even go on and call me your very own. So grateful for your love, your mercy and grace. No one can do the things you do for me. Hope. I thought you were going to put your hands together. We all know that great things start little. If it had been you, just put yourself in the shoes of these children. I'm sure by now you'll be thinking, if it had been you and you lost your life and you left your kids like this and there was nobody to take care of them, these are the very children who tend to arm robbers. These are the very children who become drug addicts. What are we doing to support them? It is not just about putting them in a home, giving them clothes and shelter. They need good health. They need good education. How are we going to support them? I want you to think, ponder over this. It could be you. Anything can happen to you at any time. 
changes your life today. You might be thinking that you've done a lot of investment for your children. But nobody knows what tomorrow has in store for them. So we are all helping. Because every little thing that you do for the Lord, He pays you back. He will find a way to protect you. It is protection that you want. Is it children? Are you looking for the fruit of the womb? Just do it for any of these children. Let's put our little bits and pieces together. Who is challenging the Lord and saying that, look, this is what I'm looking for. I don't believe you just have to give to the Lord. You are giving to these children and these children are going to touch the heart of the Lord and God will reward you. I don't know what you're looking for. Maybe you're looking for protection. Maybe you need fruit of the womb. Maybe you have what it takes to have a good life. But you're saying that God, don't allow any of my generation to go through this pain. Who is taking that bold step to say that I want to give this to support these children? We need to buy a bus because they need to go to school. We cannot say that we are going to rent a bus to take them to school in the morning and the evening. In as much as we are giving them good education, we need money. I want that man or woman who is going to take that bold step and say that me, I want to support these kids with a thousand dollars. Who is that man? Who is that woman? Who is going to take that bold step? This that you are doing, remember you are not doing it for man, you are doing it for God. And you are challenging God. I don't know what you need. It could be that you need something. You need something. You've been in the US for all this time. You don't even have your documents. And you're saying that I am not going to pay any money to anybody. But I'm going to give this money to support these children. And I am believing the Lord. That the Lord will give me my documents. Everything that I need to make me comfortable by the end of this year. Who is that man or woman? I want you to take a very bold step. A bold step. Throw that challenge to the Lord. Tell the Lord. He said if you do it to me. I will reward you. But remember, he said, because you didn't do it to the least of these children, you didn't do it to me. When I was in prison, you were not there. Sometimes we think the prison, we need to visit the prison. No, these children are in the prison and we need to support them. Who is that man? Who is that woman? Take a bold step. I'm just looking for just 10 people to say that we want to challenge the Lord by supporting the children with this amount of money. Who is that bold woman? Listen, in situations like this don't look left don't look right because you know what you're going through and you know what you're looking for from the lord sometimes when i stand and talk about these things i know what giving does some of us we are product of giving and we can testify from morning till evening it is not everything that we pray. Sometimes we've been praying and fasting. Some, some of the things that we need, we don't need prayer, we don't need fasting. We just have to give unto the Lord. Who is that man? Who is that woman? I want somebody to challenge. Mommy, oh, put your hands together for mommy. Mommy is not doing it because she has it. But she feels that, look, God, I need you to protect me. I need you to protect me. Protect my generation. Let everything that has gone on in my family be turned around. She's not doing it because she has it. She's doing it because she's believing the Lord. Who else is joining our mother? Who else? Mommy, come forward. I want the bishops to pray with you. Mommy, come forward. I need somebody also to join our mother. Who else is joining her? Who else is joining? Who else is joining? Who else? Let's put our hands together for our mommy. The Lord bless you, mommy. The Lord bless you. The Lord will remember you. Every tear that you have shed in secret, the Lord is going to wipe it. Who else is coming? I want somebody to take a bold step. Look, it take bold men. Bible said the people of Issachar understood the times and they knew what they ought to do. It is not just about praying. It is not just about fasting. It is not just about worshipping. But sometimes you need to give. David said the other time that I will not give God anything that will not touch me. 
All this while you have been giving God what doesn't touch you. Because if you always come to church and you give $100, $200, it is normal. Because you are used to it. But this time you are giving because it's your sweat. Remember that whatever we give money in our Akan language, when you give money, you are giving your blood. Who else is coming? Let us support. Who else is coming? Who is saying that I may not be able to give a thousand dollars, but I'm ready to give five hundred? How many people are coming? How many people are coming? Let's see them. I want about 10 people to say that we are giving $500 to support these children. Let's put our hands together for them. I want to see a lot of people running up. Look, sometimes when they give you this opportunity, you don't have to delay. You don't have to look at your friend. Maybe somebody would think that you have it. Sometimes we don't have, but we give. Sometimes we don't have, but we give. Because we know who we have believed. And the person whose report you have believed is the person that you are giving because of. You want to support these children and telling God that, look, my table will not dry up. Tell God, who else is coming? Challenge God. Look, tonight, I want to throw a challenge to somebody. I know what giving has done for us. And I know what I'm talking about. If you knew where I was coming from, I purposely requested that song. I purposely requested that song. Nasi said, Some of us have wept before, but giving has changed our life. Maybe you said, I'm here. I am not ready with a physical cash, but I'm ready to pledge. Thousand dollars, five hundred dollars. You can join. We'll put down your name. Even if you want to pay in two installments, we'll allow you to do that. Because I want everybody in this room to be a blessing and a partaker. Yes, let me help you. Yeah, please. If God has laid on your heart, it's a pledge. Or what or what's up. Let us do it. God will only release blessings to you on a higher dimension. Unless we give him something that costs us. When you look in the word of God, David offered to God in 2 Samuel 24 something that costed him. And God stopped the plague that killed people. Abraham was called to give Isaac his only Isaac. How can the promise come? Lord, he said, I'll be father of all nations. But Abraham didn't question God. He gave his only Isaac. What is your only Isaac? And whilst he was about to kill Isaac, you know the story. God said, no, 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 no. For I've seen that you trust me. For you are faithful. Look in the bush. There's a lamb. Sacrifice. And for this that you have done, Abraham, you shall be called the father of all nations. So, Abraham inherited that blessing because he gave something that costed him. Mm. God actually doesn't need any money from us. Mm. But because the principle of seed and harvest is there, he wants us to release, to receive, to give him something that will pay me and said, if I give thousand, I can't pay my rent in two weeks. But now I have to believe God. And oh, ah, we, I am a testimony to that. This, I'm living thousand, five hundred. Ah, it's tough because I haven't paid for that credit card. But the word says that David gave something that costed him. And God stopped the plague. Abraham gave. And now he's called the father of nations. We are under the anointing of God. Let's give something that will cost you. As I stand here, I will declare. I had an accident a few months ago. I wish I would testify. And 
bishop. I couldn't have been here. My neck is hurt. My right shoulder, I went splints, and my right knee. It was even the great archbishop and mama to even let us get here. I'm not supposed to go, not even one, more than one hour. But do you know why I'm here? I took my pendulum to be here because I want to be part of the blessing. Do you think the pain I'm in for seven months of this and being here through the pain, God will not bless me? I have given to God. That's something that will cost him. And Lord, you know, most I. But I be sure to be here. We schedule and the wife and come. Ah, and the non the so well. I I say you want to pledge. Pledging two weeks you give for the children are waiting for things and feeding. Okay? So I pledge my already. You're going to come. So please let us be quick. Pledging, please, I want papers that they will write who want to pledge, but not more than two weeks. Because I don't know. And so have a pass. Or check. Yes. So you mentioned 500, right? So I yeah. only spend and the shop to pay for those who are giving the thousand. Yeah. Then you pay for the 500. Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah. And now I invite my papa here, Archbishop. His, his eminence, please. He will have something to say. The big man is here. And then let's see how the power of God. Papa, with all reverence to you, please. I can even give it to you while you're sitting there. Yes, please. Why is the offering bowl? Please bring the bowl. Okay, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to ask those of you that came up first. With your pledges. Bring a paper, madam, with a pen. If there's a pledge or whatever you can write on. In two weeks, that will be given. Yes, please. Check. Yes. Oh, take your time. I'm walking. Oh, come, come. Yes, I want to walk in. That's so pretty. Okay, um, so what we're going to do for the sake of time, mm -hmm. yeah. um, those of you that once you've uh, given your name uh, and you've made your pledge, I'd like for you to come, um, I'm gonna lay hands on you and then I'll do it in general prayer. Amen. Praise God. Let, let's all stand because we're all in this together. I just want you to stretch your hands towards those that are given right now. And you may be saying, you know, I, I wish that was me. But God will give you an opportunity to be able to do that. So you celebrate with those that can until you're able to do that. Amen? And so... What I want you to do is stretch your hands towards them even as I pray on today. Amen? Father, we thank you. Stretch your hands towards them. We thank you, Lord God, for those that are given right now. I thank you for my sisters that came and give a sacrifice. I pray, God, that you return to them not just a hundredfold, but a thousand times that which they have sacrificed and given. We give you glory for them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. For the rest of you, come on, I'll touch you. As I touch you, you then, you, then you go. Come on, Matt. All right, yes. So just, just come. As I touch you, just pass me in line up right there, and then I'll pray. 
All right? Cover that. So for the sake of time. Bless you. 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 No, just stay right there. Just stay. No. Just stay right there. All right. Bless you. Okay. Okay. Father, we thank you. Stretch your hands towards them again. We thank you for those that are still given to you. We pray, God, that even as they delight themselves in you, you now grant them the desires of their heart. Because of what they have done, I pray, God, that you will not just bless them a hundredfold, but even a thousand times that which they have given. And Lord God, for the, because they want to even do more, that you will make a way for them. I pray even for those that are in the congregation that are still contemplating what they need to do. I pray God that you will bring clarity so that they also be able to participate in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Everyone, you can go back to your seats. And At this time, I just want to encourage you from the word of the Lord. I'm going to take this opportunity to go right into the message. Not going to be long tonight. Amen? And um, so we'll, we're going to prepare for that. Now, beloved, the Archbishop is going to give invocation and inspirational word. And for that, we continue with the fundraising. Praise the Lord. Let everything that had breath. Okay, uh, I don't know what happened there just now, but uh, everyone was excited. It's just a few hours ago, and um, you don't sound so excited right now. So we're going to change the atmosphere. Amen? Amen? And we're going to be excited again. How many of you love the Lord? So can we put our hands together and give God praise? Or as a matter of fact, because he is God, you need to stand on your feet and just clap your hands and give him praise the best way you know how. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Thank God for this opportunity for coming uh, to you today. And because of time, I'm going to make this very quick. Um, I want to, first of all, honor the angel of this house in the person of uh, Bishop Dr. Kofi Adante Botang. Amen? And so let's give the Lord praise for him. I see he's busy at the back doing what he does. Amen? But um, I'm, I want to, us to truly uh, celebrate this great man of God for what God is doing. He wants to keep it on the humble side and so he doesn't like the limelight but we know what God is doing through him and it needs to be celebrated. Amen? And with behind, they say be, behind every great man there's, got, there's definitely got to be a better woman. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Amen? When God blesses you, he blesses you up. And so we thank God for Lady Elise. If, I'm, if I said it wrong, just correct me. Let, tell me it about seven times and I'll get it. Amen? We thank God for you and for the great work that God is allowing you all to do. Amen? I thank God also for the leadership and the, the, the other congregants and all of the pastors and everyone that came to celebrate tonight and to uh, help in this effort. Amen? I just want to turn to your attention uh, tonight. Uh, I also uh, brought with me my uh, dear wife, Lady Dion Cockfield. Amen? And we thank God for her. She's also a pastor. 
Amen. And um, uh, just finished law school, so we thank God for what he's doing in her life. And so we're going to be having representation in the kingdom. We just don't need to have uh, just the saints, but we got to have people that represent the saints. Okay? All right. Uh, also, we, uh, uh, with me is my uh, mother-in-law. I don't like to say mother-in-law because she's my mother. Uh, that's the way I, I do it, and that's um, precisely and a very good friend of uh, my wife, her sister, growing up all the time, uh, Sister Karen. Amen. And her uh, pastor also happy, happens to be uh, from Ghana also. So we're all one big family. Amen. And so we thank God for that. I just felt a need to interject right here and do what, what it is. Maybe it's a little bit uh, out of protocol, but I think since we were already on this trend uh, that, that I need to bring the word because what you all were trying to, to say just now is what God gave me for tonight. And so I, I said instead of us belaboring this, let me just share with you what God shared with me, and then we will continue and get this, uh, get this through. Amen? If you have your Bibles or your, uh, your, your iPads or your phones, I want you to turn with me to the book of Mark, chapter number 6. Mark, chapter number 6. And I want to share something there quickly with you. It's a very familiar text, and because of time, I'll just read the text verse on tonight, and that verse is verse number 41 of Mark chapter 6, and it reads thus, and when he had taken the five loaves and fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed, and break the loaves, and give them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fishes divided he among them. You seen it? You got it? And when he had taken the five loaves and the fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and break the loaves, and give them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fishes divided he among them. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you because it's life and light. Now bless your word unto our hearts in the process. Glorify your name. Anoint lips of clay to so the queen declare your word. I pray as I bring forth this word that you will stand in my body, speak with my tongue, think with my mind. Let your pure word only come forth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You still excited about Jesus? You still excited about this program tonight? Amen. Tonight we are gathered together to celebrate this awesome gift from God in the person of Bishop Dante. Amen. Uh, Kofi Dante Boutin. And the vision to execute his God-given mandate. Let us pause and give God praise for all the mighty things that he has done. Amen? We, we truly, when we truly understand the concept of blessings, we get to understand the fact that the protocol of blessing is that the greater blesses the lesser. Amen? The greater blesses the lesser. Amen? And so, uh, therefore, it is important that we now uh, comprehend the source of the blessing. Amen? Because it is much more important than the blessing and its offshoots. And so tonight I want to speak to you a little while on this topic, connecting to the source to be a blessing. Connecting to the source to be a blessing. Okay, I want you to turn to your neighbor. Uh, you're not going to do that too much tonight, but I want you to turn to somebody eyeball to eyeball. By now you should 
be able to tell me what color it is. Tell them tonight we're talking about connecting to the source to be a blessing. Now we all want to be a blessing, but you cannot be a blessing unless you are connected to the source of the blessing. Amen? Until you're connected to the source of the blessing. Amen? So tonight my assignment is simple. It's, it's simply to share with you uh, the benefits and responsibilities of being connected to the source of all blessings and the purpose for being blessed. Amen? There's a purpose for being blessed. Many people say, Lord, bless me, bless me, bless me. But what's the purpose? Why do you want God to bless you? Just because he's sharing out blessings? Why do you want to be blessed? The reason that, that, that you, we must want to be blessed is because we must understand that there's a purpose for the blessing. Okay? So as we consider Mark's account of Jesus' object, uh, object lesson on the feeding of the 5,000, let us extrapolate some valuable principles that are necessary for us to, to be connected to the source and the protocol by which we maintain a smooth flow of being a beneficiary and a conduit of being connected to the source of the blessings. Amen? And so I'm going to spend the next five minutes or so and just share a, a, a little bit on the principles that we must understand when we talk about uh, connecting to the source, amen, of the blessing. This story that we just read in Mark, I just read the text for you. It, most of us know the story, but I'm just going to give you a little backdrop and then get right into what I'm saying. We know that Jesus was just finished uh, talking to uh, the people. There was about, the, the Bible says, uh, five, around 5,000, uh, not counting uh, me, uh, women and children. And so he had now spoken to them and they had now received spiritual food. They were now filled because he had spent the time talking with them. And then it came to be very late in the evening and the, and the Bible says that when it, when it got so late in the evening, the disciples came to Jesus and says, Jesus, it's time to send them away. Because it's getting late. And if they don't get out of here by a certain time, then they will not be able to get what they need. And, and so we will, be, we will all be here and we'll be in trouble. So when they came to Jesus and told Jesus, that, they had, that, that, uh, that he needed to stop what he was doing and send them away, Jesus said something very interesting to them. He said, you give them to eat. Jesus said to them, if you're so concerned, then why don't you give them something to eat? Now when Jesus said that to them, of course, they're beginning to look at what they have because anytime we're challenged, our first motion is to protect ourselves. Right? So our first motion is to see how we can get out of whatever it is we're going to be challenged with. And when Jesus said to them, you give them something to eat, they said to, to Jesus, well, Jesus, how are we going to do this? We gonna, are we going to go down and, and get 200 penny worth of, of, of bread to, to give to all of these people? Meaning, are we going to go into our coffers? Are we going to go into uh, just the little uh, monies that we have to feed all these people? But they did not get what Jesus was saying. What Jesus was saying to them is that if, the, if you're saying that the people are hungry then what you need to do is to do something about it. And, out of, and when he spoke to the disciples and they were not prepared to do what they needed to do, he says, go around and see what we have in the house. When Jesus gave them the assignment, all they came up with was one boy. 
that had his lunch, which was five loaves and two fish, or two fishes, depending on where you're from. Some of us say fish, or some say fishes. All right? Okay? And so, the, the little boy with his five loaves and two fish was excited to give it to Jesus. Now, he spoke to his disciples. He said, you give them to eat. And they had an attitude. But when he asked if there's anything in the house, the little boy was willing to give up his lunch. Somebody said that was everything he had. Somebody say 100% of what he had. I can just imagine this boy right now and with his friends right next to him probably saying, what's wrong with you? Because his friends probably were smelling that fish and figuring, I can't wait for Jesus to stop so that we can really get to eat this bread and, 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 and you know, and, 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 and do this fish, you know. And then all of a sudden when they ask what is in the house, this boy just give it up. Could you imagine his friends being upset with him? But he knew what he was doing because he saw a need and even though it was small, he figured that it will do some good. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Okay? But what, what, what I love about what the, what the boy did is that he didn't say, I'm going to give you two loaves and a fish and I'll just keep half for my lunch. But what he did was he gave it all to Jesus. Because the reason this is recorded is that we will learn a principle. And the principle of blessings is that whenever you are blessed, the purpose of a blessing is so that you can be a blessing. Are you hearing me? So turn to somebody and tell them, I am blessed. But I'm blessed to be a blessing. Turn to somebody else. Tell them I'm blessed. And I'm blessed to be a blessing. Amen. I could just about finish it right now. But I'll give you two, two or three more minutes. And just share these couple of principles with you. The principle number one. Is the fact that we must understand. That we must possess a heart of compassion. If you do not possess a heart of compassion, you don't need to be blessed. Because it means that everything that comes to you will stop with you. And if everything that comes to you stops with you, you're going to get what I call spiritual constipation. Because if everything that comes in stays, how many of us know we can't live too long? If we are just eating and eating and eating and we never have a, the, the chance to get rid of what we don't need, how long do you think you're going to live? So when we are being blessed, it's because God has this interesting cycle that he has placed in the earth and it's called the law of reciprocity. And the law of reciprocity says that we must, that whenever God blesses us, we must look for a way of how we can bless others. And if we keep the cycle going, then we are going to continually be blessed. Amen? And that is why I'm saying that many times what we were taught was wrong. You remember when Christianity came to our countries? They did not just bring the gospel, but they brought, the, they, they brought all of the material. They brought all of the benches. They brought everything. And they say, you don't even have to give nothing. And so we came up with this mentality that everything is free. And they did not teach us the fact that what God is, wants to do is to change us, amen, and get us better. So we learn how to rely in getting stuff, but never being taught how to give stuff. And if you're going to be blessed, unless you learn the art of giving, <laughs> are you hearing me? You will never be so blessed 
Because if all you do is take and you never give, you have broken the law that God has set in order for you to prosper. Are you hearing me tonight? Okay? I told you five minutes. I got two left. Okay? So we must possess, first of all, a heart of compassion. You must be selfless. This little boy in the crowd, he was selfless. He had compassion when even the disciples didn't have compassion. Also, too, he was loving. Because unless you, uh, you are loving, even though you've seen all that, you, that you've seen here tonight, it will not move you one inch. Except you have the love of God that's being shed abroad in your heart. Are you hearing me? Principle number two, is we must possess a heart of giving. Somebody say possess a heart of giving. Giving should never be something that we labor over. You, you, you know what? You know, you know what I don't like, especially when it comes to these things like fundraisers and stuff like that, is that when we have to do that, it's like pulling teeth. But yet down the block for a campaign. That no one is, is necessarily promised to win anything. You've got people that's paying $2,500 a plate. Just to be in the presence of somebody that they're not even sure is going to win. You all didn't hear what, I'm just, what I just said. Okay? But when it comes for us to doing something, amen... That is, that, that's going to help our fellow brothers and sisters. Sometimes we have a problem with that. Call me what you want. Call me prosperity preacher. Call me whatever. I know that there's certain things that cannot be answered without money. Because the Bible tells me that money answereth all things. Touch your neighbor, say, if it's a thing, money can answer it. So, why does God want us to be blessed? It's because of that. He wants us to be a blessing. So, how many of us know that we're blessed? Lift up your hands if you're blessed. You're thinking about it. Amen? Amen? But if we are blessed, we must have a heart of giving. Okay? You must see yourself as a primary vessel that God can use. That's what the little boy saw himself as. Okay? The disciples were hesitant to give what they had. But this little boy gave all that he had. You must also be willing to make a sacrifice. This little boy made a sacrifice. And because he made the sacrifice, over 5,000 people were able to benefit from his sacrifice. Are you hearing me? All right? I'm on my last point now. No, I'm not going to preach. Because if I preach, you're all going to be here till tomorrow this time. Okay? We must possess a heart. Of serving. Give me two minutes. Don't come. That's not going to intimidate me. Okay? You must possess a heart of service. Okay? That's what Jesus wants for us to have. A heart of service. And when it comes to giving, unless you have a heart to serve, it does not benefit you. Are you hearing me? So what did Jesus do? First of all, Jesus received what the little boy had. Now some of you are going to say, but Jesus had some nerve. 
even though the boy volunteered it why did Jesus take the little boy's lunch just like some of them preachers Because what Jesus was doing, he was teaching a principle and he knew what the boy was going to receive was going to be much bigger than what he ever had. Can somebody give God a praise? Amen? Jesus looked to the source. What did Jesus do? Jesus took the lunch. The next thing he did, he looked to the source of blessing. The Bible says he looked up to heaven. Who is the source of your bless of blessings? God is the source of blessings. It's not your boss that's your source. It's not the people that in high places that is your source. It's not the people that you think that have it is your source. Because everyone is dependent on the source for their blessing and so when Jesus looked up to heaven what he was saying is that Father you are the source of all blessings and because you are the source of all blessings I want what the boy gave to me I want to give it to you and because I, I want to give it to you so that you can in turn bless it and multiply it to be a blessing to all those that need it. And the Bible says that even as he blessed it, he did what he, he as he uh, looked up, the next thing that happened is that after he looked up and God blessed him, because God didn't bless it. When he looked up, God blessed him, because the blessing really rests upon us. And the stuff that we call the blessing are the derivative of the blessings. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? And so when, when he looked up to God, God blessed him so that he can now bless what he had in his hands. When God blessed him and he blessed what he had in his hands, the Bible says he broke it. And then he gave it to his disciples and told his disciples to give it to the people. Because he was teaching them another principle. I'm, I'm blessing this thing to give it to you. But the purpose I'm giving it to you is not to hurt it. It's for you to give it to somebody else. When we understand the principle of God being our source we will have need for absolutely nothing. Nobody is my source but God. The job that I do, my boss is not my source. He is just a, a vessel that God is using so that it can be a blessing to me. You only hear what I just said. So I don't owe folk stuff. I owe my life to God. Because he's responsible for my blessings. And everything that I have is because he has blessed me. I wish I had somebody in this building that will give God a praise. Because you understand that everything that you have, if it was not for, for the goodness of God, that you wouldn't have it today. And everything that you have is because God has blessed you. Case in point. How many of you think you're so, so muchy much? I don't care what your title is. All God has to do is say I'm not giving you oxygen for the next couple of seconds. If he will withhold oxygen from us for just a couple of minutes, where will we be? It didn't matter what our title was. It didn't matter who we knew. It didn't matter who the king or the queen or, 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 or the bishop or, the, or whoever was. God is the source of our blessing. 
And once we recognize that he is the source of our blessing, I'm here to tell you that you will never have to beg for the rest of your life because he will bless you abundantly. The Bible says that he will give you exceedingly abundantly above all that you can even think or ask or imagine. I'm done. I'm done. I know you're all getting nervous. But I'm here to tell you tonight. The reason God gave me this word for you. Is because he knew you were going to be here. I toiled all night. When I knew I had to speak. And I asked God. What would you have me to say? And there was absolutely nothing. That was coming. And like at the last moment. God says to me. I want you to speak on this because the people that you're going to meet, I'm one to give them an opportunity to be linked up with the source of all blessings, to be connected to the source of all blessings. Don't get intimidated by people. If God wants to bless you, he will use all kinds of people to bless you. God will use people that you don't think have anything. And you will see God move on their hearts and they'll be able to do it. The reason that I'm here, I was sent here tonight. And the reason that I came all the way from New York, amen, because of, of, of at, at the invitation of, of your bishop is to deliver this word. I buried my nephew yesterday. I left, I left the, the funeral service to drive up here. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because I understand who is my source. And when you understand this, no one can ever get you intimidated. I don't care who they are. Allowing your boss to get you upset. He is not your source. God is. And just like God provided him to be your source. If he act the fool. God can move him. Are you hearing me? And so tonight. I close with this. We've seen. What God is using. Bishop to do. In, my, in, in the story I just outlined for you, instead of asking the big folks, God had to ask a child to feed the big folk. Why am I saying that? Every one of us in here God has blessed. If God didn't bless you, then this is not for you. You might as well walk out because the rest of this wouldn't do you no good. But if God has been good to you, I came for you tonight. If you've been blessed, do you think that what God blessed you, it was just for you? Do you think that what God is blessing you for is so you can go and, and, and buy, uh, uh, you know, another Mercedes to impress I don't know who? Because folk at these days don't care what you drive. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. I see people going all kinds of expense thinking they're impressing people. And people are not impressed with what you have. So you get this, this, this bigger house. I, I, and and, and don't, don't, don't hit hate on me right now. I believe if you, if you can afford it and if you can get it, you need to have it. Drive what you want. God don't be upset because you drive a Benz or a Maybach. But don't do it at the expense of you not being a blessing. At the end of the day, what will your story read? I blessed him. I blessed her. But they never was a blessing. 
I came for you tonight. Because God says if you were in this room, he expects you to be a blessing. Because he has blessed you. Are you hearing me tonight? So I'm going to make one more appeal. That's why I told you to take your seat. I'm going to make one more appeal. Because I do believe tonight that the people that came up here were not all the people that God has blessed. And I want to give everyone in here an opportunity to be a blessing. Amen? Amen? And there's some of you that, that have given. And God says, I want you to do better. Because I blessed you way better than what you did. And if you don't have it tonight, you can go ahead and make that pledge. But don't leave this room without being a blessing. Because God allow you to come here to give you a test. And I believe that the source of all blessings, if you want to participate in this tonight, will provide it for you even if you don't have it right now. But when God does provide it for you, don't go out there and buy a Big Mac. You understand? Don't go out there and buy the next Benz that you've been looking at because this money just came out of nowhere. Do what you say you're going to do. Are you hearing me? And so I'm going to make one more appeal. Right now, let us be a blessing. Amen? Amen? In whatever form. And I trust you. I'm not going to go through the whole thing of telling you come up here, you know, put a line and all. You know. How many of us know we're bigger than that? Huh? Yeah, we're bigger than that. God can trust us. That's why he blesses us. Okay? So I, I say to you tonight, just do what God tells you to do before you leave this house. Amen? Amen? And I'm done. I just want to leave you with a blessing so that you can be a blessing. Amen. Lift up your hands right where you are. Stand. Everybody's standing. Father, I thank you for everyone in this house tonight. I thank you for everyone that you have blessed to be a blessing. I pray God that you will lay on their hearts what you are requesting of them. And I pray that even as they respond to you, that you will bless them in such a way that they will be able to say it was nothing but God that did this for me. And out of this, I'm going to continue to be a blessing. I pray, God, that you will return to them not only a hundredfold, but a thousand times what they've given, Father. And what you've prompted them to give. What you've placed in their hearts to give. And for this, we give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Now, if you've been blessed by what God shared with us tonight, could you give him a, 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 a praise tonight like you, like you know that you know that you know that you are blessed to be a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Archbishop. Thank you so much. God bless you. Um, let's welcome Nana Ampofuridu. Kings and Queens Association are also supporting this worthy cause with $500. Let's put our hands together for them. Nana has a few words for us. I always say I'm proud of my language. So when I meet my people like this, I speak my language. I traveled far away to Nigeria. 
I stayed here almost about four years, five years. And what I saw over there was that they were very proud of their language. So I'm proud of my language. And they can make me a sida, a dima, a sofu, penny four, and a sofu, a ene moba hangina. Besandi asida mami nyanum ahenum ni ahema a menomba. You see, when you meet the NFA, now would the answer a ye. Yena yeba yepa fa nana adontin bishop. Ayana muboni dina mumfa nana non kahu. Mr. Mosey, I'm a partner and I'm coming. Near money, born in the Jumer, dear pa. Ah, oh dear, Eddie Moa and Yanka. And any penny, na na sebe, a big answer. Now, best dress, eh? Mama, in your arm for a donny be a queer, young panta, your bay a cheek. Now, in Yanka, any a crown for all your more young coupon a day, each row five. And then me baha, I'm too many. Ye bahan tempa. Was who here program no sunana, a ye non sian, non son. And so ye by them, and I just a nebra copa ye. I'm mechanipi. And no cray a bar cope. Many an ye. Nanny in tear many an in the same too many sha. My baham pen be bree. And so, me too many. I won't cry at all. So, saying, Seven, seven, I saw a man. Master, I saw a man. Now, more bishop. Now, you may dear old dinu. Any insha, any adum. Some more, more, no. I say, Penny, for so back of four, no more dread. Ego. The master, I saw a man. Momoan, you may dear old dinu. Any instant, you are dumb and for mamma. May Cassa no man in yet in Tim be brave. But I'm winning us, only I'm your own shamo. No beer will ye be my eh, near when ye be cra noa. Why yet a large being said what the banner. When I'm instant, you may ye ye almost crown when ye be no so or cock cra noa or ba ah, on funny the end, Emra. I'm in ceremonia, Madame Was. Thank you very much. Nana, I was say one of them. Let me say, of I had read it, Nana, some of them, and even I have come for. In dream, you know, I'm not just say, you can't hear it. At this juncture, we started by supporting the Divine Privilege Home Project. We started with $1,000, we came to a $500. Maybe you are here, you want to support with $500. Before I call the bishop upstage, you have $300, you have $200, you have $100. You can come up and drop it. Or you can go back there and quickly pay. But I would love you to come and drop it here for us. Um, with a machine, can you can come forward. If you want to support DJ, give us music still. Nasi. 200, 300, even if it's a hundred dollar, you can please come forward and support. Nothing is too small. We need that widow's might because like what the small boy did. I don't think you want to be here and you want God to use that little boy out there. Avail yourself and allow God to use you. You can please come drop your support. 200, 500, 300, please come forward and drop it. $200, $300, $500. Oh, let's put our hands together for them as they are willing and ready to support the kingdom. Thank you so much and God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Can we have more people come in and let's do the clapping better? I would invite Bishop up stage, but let's do it. $300, $200, $100. You can drop it. $100, you can drop it. $100. 
500, 200, 300, and 100. The least is the 100. Let's do that for the Lord. Let's put our hands together. Let's put our hands together. I want to see you clapping for those who are trying to support this project. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Whilst, can we be upstanding and welcome the Bishop of the House, His Excellency, Bishop Kofi Adonte Boateng. Let's do it. Butter for him. You can please drop it. You can please drop it. 500, 200, 300, and 100. Before I hand over the microphone to Bishop, I want everybody in this auditorium just pick a $50. Drop it at the feet of the prophet. There's something in dropping offerings at the feet of the prophet. And when you drop, don't just drop it. You might have given already. Don't just drop it. But come with an expectation. The other time Jesus said, when the woman with the issue of blood touched the helm of his garment, he said, virtue has gone out of me. Drop 50 at the feet of the prophet and let virtue go out of him. Look, tonight, the unction upon him is great. Let virtue go out of him. Just drop it and take that virtue. Tap that unction. Tap it. 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 Papa, please stand here for us so that they can really touch you and virtue would go out of you. Please, can we do it quickly? Run. Run. These ones, we don't walk. We run. Run. Just tap it. Just tap it. Just tap it. Just tap it. Tap something. Tap something. Tap it. Run and tap it. You know what you are believing God for. Just tap it. Pick it. Pick it. Bible said the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violence will take it by force. Come and tap it. Pick it. Don't allow anything to stop you. Nothing should intimidate you. Just pick it. Tap whatever you are looking for. Let virtue go out of him. Let virtue go out of him. Let him feel that virtue has gone out of him. Just tap it quickly. Let's run. Let's run. Let's run. Let's run. Let's run. Let's run and do it. Cast up number 571-921-2383. 571-921-2383. If you want to do cash up, that is the number. 571 571- Nine two one two three eight three. Let's do it. Those who are coming. Any more? Anybody else coming? Anybody else coming? Anybody else coming? Let's do it. Quick, 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 quick. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will surprise you. To but at the end of the week, expect a miracle. Let's put our hands together for Bishop Adonte Mbuate. Amen. Amen. Please, can you turn to somebody and thank the person for being here? Before I want to acknowledge a woman that is here, uh, if you are in this area and you want to shop in any African store, uh, she's the person that this church will buy from. She's here. Uh, Global African Market. Mama, can you get up with your assistant? Let us acknowledge her, please. Anybody who goes from the church to the place, if you buy anything, 50% off. Yeah. Mama, God bless you. Please give a clap of ring unto her. And also, please, ladies and gentlemen, I have this wonderful cheese. Look at the color. Look at their clothing. Look at. Please, can you celebrate the Nananum here? <laughs> oh, please, Mr. Alute, stop the concert. Uh, Nana. Uh, Nana Redu and all the chiefs, they offered the children $500. Please, can you acknowledge them? Oh, it is not enough. Can you give them a clap offering, please? Nana no me say, yada masse, yami shamwate. Aha. My father, the Archbishop, is here. Please, he preached so well. Can you thank him again? There's a man here that is representing the White House. He is representing the United Nations also while he's here. He's my boss. He's here. When I finish speaking a little bit, I will introduce him for him also to share a word or two from higher places. But please, let me, let me talk small. Pay attention. 
Let me say this in V first. What do you know? Say Adiachi, na Obi e Janka, na Sunim do Adiachi Obi. Do you want to be a same of a power? This is what I just said. If a child gets up in the morning and he has no mother and father, maybe four years, five years old, going to bed at night, they have to cry because normally they don't get enough food to eat. And when they are getting up in the morning, also life is hopeless because they don't know what the day is going to offer them. Can I tell you something? I can be rich with all the money on this earth, but there is nothing fulfilling in life. Like when I get up in the morning and I call the orphanage, and the kids hear that I have called, the excitement from their voice alone, it makes life worth living. I have children in the house. They, my children. But you see, when these kids, some of them, when they, 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 their fathers died before they, they were even born, so they don't have a last name. So I have to put my last name on them. And putting my last name on them, if you call them, before they even tell you anything, they mention my last name first. God told Abraham, I will make you a father of many nations. I never dreamed that I would ever live to have about 30 or 50 children, but now I'm even passing 50 because my name is on more than 50 children. Everybody in life, right? Christianity is not how eloquent you preach, how prophetic you are, how passionate and how I can shout. But I believe Christianity is when we have deep love enough to love our neighbor as ourselves. So please, I'm begging you. I know most of you have given. I'm not going to stand here to ask you for anything. But as you go home, think beyond your gate. Think beyond your door. Whatever you have that you don't appreciate. There's somebody somewhere who doesn't have a quarter of it. But they're still happy living life. Some of us, we have too much and we are ungrateful. We don't appreciate whatever God has given us. We only know how to complain and point fingers. But there are others that don't have a little piece of what you have. Let us appreciate what God has done us. And appreciate everything around us because God has been faithful to us. Black people, we are very good in condemning people. You can do the best thing for them. They will never appreciate. They are waiting for just a tiny thing for them to talk about. But God has been faithful to us. God has been a blessing to us. Let us learn to appreciate the God that has given us what we have. And also appreciate God to bless those that God also created. But he didn't give them what he has given us. Am I talking to you? I pray that while you spend time and took time to be here, God will bless you and bless you like never before. I wish all the people who were here last night for the all night had time to also come here. They are tired. I'm very, very tired myself. But in spite of it all, you're here. We appreciate you. And I say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Midamase, 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 oh, thank you. I, I want to introduce my boss. I want to introduce my boss. This man is Dr. Bannister. He's a lecturer, of, a lecturer at one of the universities here. He also represents the White House whilst he's here. He's my director also at the United Nations. And please don't be shocked. Next year, the United Nations take me to Saudi Arabia, Dubai, Kwadaso. <laughs> Nana, your son, your son, where God is taking me, I, I, I thank God that he gave me humility before he lifted me. God has been faithful. Ladies and gentlemen, can we celebrate this great man that is here? Oh, please, can we be on our feet, this man? Oh, please, make a joyful noise. Let's celebrate. Pleasant good evening to each and every one of you, to members of the head table, to the kings, 
queens, queen mother, and all of the delegates, special invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being here this evening. I know it's very, very important, and I love what I see in the sense that I see mothers. I see mothers. Fathers, we need to do a little bit better. The reason why I say that is because I didn't have my father growing up. So I can relate to the children even though I had my mother, but my mother was a single parent raising three children, and it was not easy. She used to clean the church. When I say clean the church, the church is very big, and she would clean the church every Sunday. Uh, if, after every service, uh, I would leave school, and then I have to go to the church and help her clean the church. And whatever little the church gives to us, that's what we live off of. I know about living in a 10 by 10. A 10 by 10, no light. I'm using candle to do my schoolwork and stuff like that. So I understand and I know. So Bishop, uh, His Excellency, I want to openly say that I know what it is like to sleep on sheets that is not fully a sheet. So with that being said, I would like to personally, my organization, we would like to donate 75 sheets and pillowcases. I will make arrangements with you to have it delivered. If possible, I might deliver it myself. Okay, enough of that. Now, my name is His Excellency. I'm going to give you my full title. I know my title is not as long as you people, but <laughs> I will hope that one day I can get a piece. <laughs> my name is His Excellency, Reverend Dr. Devon Bannister. I am I'm the Pro Chancellor for Psyche International University and Seminary. I am also one of the main representatives to the United Nations, representing five organizations in the UN. I am also the president for Magban Arts. We are an arts organization, and I'm a minister and a father. There is so much more I can put. <laughs> but at the end of the road, I'm just a humble, young, servant, little boy. I like to put that boy, that little boy part in. I know some folks say, no, you're a man. Yes, but at the same time, in the eyes of great men, I'm a, I'm a child, still learning. Even though he may call me his boss, he is my boss. <laughs> well, please join me on stage, sir. I mean, this man's a sharp man, you know. Isn't he sharp? Look at that. Look at that, step man. Look at that. You know, I find it very interesting the way how God tends to connect us with people. He, he does it in such a strategic way that there are times we don't know who uh, is in our midst. Uh, it's interesting when we have angels around us and we don't know. And we treat them like nothing. I, I'm very much humble. Because my mother taught me humility from a little boy growing up. That is the reason why today I can stand before you. Because if I had too much pride and full of myself, then I don't think God would have given me what he's given to me. So that I now can be able to turn around and be a blessing to children, teenagers, adults, and seniors. One of the things that I'm happy about is... There are times I will get into the presence of people and I do not disclose anything other than my name is Devon Bannister. All of my titles and everything, I take it and I put it aside. And I allow God to be the one to make the divine connections. So I say to him, I don't want to put myself out there. Whomever you want me to meet, you make that happen. I am not going to go and run behind people. If you want me to meet them, then you do what you have to do. And God has done exactly that when it comes to this young man. Yes, I say young man because he is indeed a young man. He came to 
our gala last year as an honoree. And <laughs> interestingly, for whomever was there last year, you saw how I was. I am the president of my organization. And I am still running around in a t-shirt and the pants. The event started and I am not dressed. And to see after I got dressed, the way how he embraced, it, it made me look at him different. Everyone, yes. But he stood out in such a great way that I had to go back and talk about him. That, that's me. I, I will go and I will talk your name. I will gossip. Obidiah 1-1. One, one. Jesus gossip, okay? God spread room. If you read Obadiah 1 1, God do a little bit of gossiping. You don't believe me? Please, okay, we can go to church quickly. Can someone please look at the Bible, King James Version, and read Obadiah 1 1. Someone quickly, quickly, quickly. Obadiah 1 verse 1. So you wouldn't feel that I'm joking and playing games. I'm setting the stage. <laughs> Obadiah 1 1. Who have it? Yes, make sure it's the King James Version. I don't want any other version. The vision of Obadiah. Let me give you the mic. The vision of Obadiah. Thus said the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor. Stop right there, sir. <laughs> Who do, when you hear about rumors, you're done thinking something gossiping, right? So... But it, it's right there. And the rumor was an ambassador is sent among the heathens. So when, after I learned of the great work that he is doing just from um, his bio and him sending proof to me, well, to my committee last year, um, on the work that he's been doing with the orphanage, with the church, uh, with schools, with the police, uh, everything that he has been doing. <laughs> I said, well, I can't stop there. Because now, here it is, you have a man that is doing what God has placed him here on earth to do. And, and he is walking in the steps that Jesus outlined. So I took it upon myself uh, when I came here and we licensed him and commissioned him as an international chaplain, I took it upon myself to write then and there, even give him full appointment to, uh, to the United Nations as one of my representatives. And uh, many, many doubted, right? Yes? We had a lot of doubt in Thomases, right? Didn't we? And what did those doubting Thomases say when they saw you all the way, where did I say you, Geneva or Vienna? Geneva. Ha. What did they say when they saw you in Geneva? They were shocked. They were shocked. And then when you came back to the U.S. and I called you and I said I need you to come and speak at the U.N. in New York. What did they say then? They were heartbroken. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to let you know that that has really set uh, the orphanage and this church on a different path if you don't know. Many, I've heard and I've seen many churches uh, curse the United Nations. Hey, they're bad. Every government bad. And you have, excuse me, Jesus, you have bad churches too. Okay? And I, I can testify of a few, but I would not. This is not the place for that. Uh, that's right. I'll watch it. <laughs> and you, you know, just two Fridays ago, I literally, someone put, put, pulled me on a, a, a live interview. <laughs> and they put me on the spot. Well, I had to call a speed, a speed. But nevertheless, I digress. So, we've taken the time, we've done that, and it has really transformed the church and the mission uh, of the church, this local church, and your, interna your church at large. Because now you're not just <clears throat> functioning as, as a messenger just for this body here. But you're a messenger at large. And then, go ahead. 
So from there, we were able to, I was able to make recommendation again after I heard of the event that you're having, and I said, you know what, let's put this in. Um, and I know I said to you, I'll do one thing one way, but I kind of, I, I had to tell you something so I could do something else. You know the thing? <laughs> I couldn't show the whole hand. I had to show part of the hand, you know? So I was able to make petition on your behalf, sir. The White House, Washington. The American story depends not on any one of us, not on some of us, but on all of us. I congratulate you on taking it upon yourself to contribute to the public good, and I'm proud to present you with the President's Gold Volunteer Service Award in recognition of your service. Throughout our country's history, the American story has been strengthened by those who combine an optimism about what can be with the resilience to turn that vision into reality. I know I'm not alone in recognizing that those who are willing to step up and volunteer in service of community and country are essential to the ongoing work of forming of a more perfect human, you, union. Sorry. By sharing your time and passion, you are helping discover and deliver solutions to the challenges we face, solutions that we need now more than ever. We are living in a moment that calls for hope and light and love. Hope for our futures, light to see our way forward, and love for one another. Through your service, you are providing all three. <clears throat> On behalf of the American people, I extend my heartfelt appreciation to you for your volunteer leadership. And I encourage you to continue to answer the call to serve. The country is counting on you. Signed by President Joseph R. Biden. <clears throat> the President's Volunteer Service Award is presented to John Adonteng Boteng, as well as this lovely, shiny, sparkling gold medal. So, I want to let you know, I have another surprise for him, but I can't give it now, okay? I'm full of surprises. I got a lot of tricks up my sleeve. As my mother would usually say, or, or older folks, you would say, you got a, 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 a scratch for every itch, and a plaster, or a band-aid, as Americans would say, for every sore. That's me. So, with that being said, in December, on December 1st, I am having... Uh, my annual gala, which I will be honoring him again. Uh, he don't know what he's getting then. All he knows is that he has to show up. So the invitation is extended to the entire church and everyone. I usually tell people, if, 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 if you come alone, then you're only going to get... So you can't vex if you only get... You have to bring your cheerleaders. So, I expect to see everyone. The whole church. I have space. If I have to change venue, I'll change venues. If I have to tell the hotel, listen, throw a tent outside and let's, 
uh, put some heat inside of the tent because it's winter, okay? <laughs> we can accommodate. With your permission, I would like to, I have an extra one here, a second one. I would like to extend this to, uh, please help me with the name. I do not want to bite my tongue. Elsie. Ira Adonson Bolton. Where is she? The children in the orphanage, they not only have a father, and they have to have a mother. So, this is what you people are here for. And this is what you support. So, don't see it as uh, my money is going in vain or my services is going in vain. It's touching the lives of, some, of a child. And like I said at the beginning, if it wasn't for pastors and bishops like Bishop, His Excellency, my doctor, <laughs> I would not have been here. So imagine the impact that he is making on those little children's life. When others would have said to me, little boy, go and sit in the corner day. My pastor used to say, no, 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 come sit here. And from those little things is what have me here today. That I'm able to be as bold enough to stand here. And God is able to use me to do what I do. Excellency, First Lady, congratulations on a job well done and continue to do more. And I have more surprises for you, which will come in December. I need to allow you to digest on this. Yes. Oh, and he will be speaking again at the UN. So whenever he says to you people, uh, I have to speak at the UN, he can bring an entourage with him, you know. Okay? So, take the invitation. I know what I'm saying to you. If you were to go to the UN, and, and you say you want to enter the UN, you could only enter up to a certain part. And that is the visitor section. You can't go beyond that point to see where the action really takes place. The most you can do is sit, on, sit at home on your couch or in your car as you drive and watch it on television. But do you know what it is to be in the room? So when the invitation is extended, I expect to see you people show up. Okay? I know you have your busy work schedule. Tell your boss, this is a once in a lifetime. You never know when again. And if you extend it to your boss himself, you'll be surprised. I extended it to my, one, of, one of my bosses. You better believe he canceled work the entire day. <laughs> Just to be there. <laughs> Bishop, congratulations to you, and thank you all. I thought you were going to do it better. I thought you were going to add some noise. Are you not excited? Yeah. Your bishop That's right. is being invited to the White House and being honored from the White House. Let's do it better. Congratulations. Nananum yestremo eh ahobrasiem be die kamo be ka ho me yetwa mfoni na na ye de akwansre atoso nso amamo
Thank you. We are so grateful and um, we didn't take this honor for granted. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. At this juncture, I would like to have the vote of thanks. But before the vote of thanks, you know our traditional leaders are very busy. They have other assignments to attend. So when you see them leave, officially they've asked permission. That is what is done in our tradition. So they will be leaving us very soon. Let's welcome Mrs. Elsie Adontain Boateng, the first lady of the house, to give us the vote of thanks. Archbishops, I deem it a great honor to be in your presence for your word, for your love, and for your touch, for everything that you've done today. Taking care of a child is not easy, even though if it's yours. But to extend the love to somebody's child makes you a different person altogether. For being here, for supporting the cause, for touching a child and making a difference in their life, I say God bless you. God bless you for coming. God bless you for giving. God bless you for loving these children. You've made a difference in their life today. And generations to come will remember you and they will remember this day for what you have done. May God bless you. Thank you for coming. Amen. Thank you, Rev. Mrs. Elsie Adontim Boate. Let's give it up for the first lady of the house. Thank you. Let's invite Bishop Belinda Brown to give us a closing prayer. Bishop Belinda Brown to give us a closing prayer and the benediction. Bishop Belinda Brown. Father, we want to thank you for a time like this. We are so grateful for how far you have brought us. Indeed, we commit our ways into your hands. May you guide and protect us, carry us on the wings of an eagle and take us safely to our homes and in our beds. May you give us good dreams. We thank you for an answered prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Papa will share the benediction. Please, can you all, get, can you all please be on feet? And in case you don't know this lady also, I know she didn't introduce herself. She's a big media personality from Ghana. Uh, Adum used, used to be. Now you are Metro. Metro also you used to be. Now you are Adum. It's Metro. She's a very big media personality. She came here and she has been a big blessing. If you come and see her, she will shout and shout and shout. You see how she's shouting. And now I have a sister in the house. I pray that the Lord will bless you. The Lord will make you great. The Lord will grant you favor. That your trip from Ghana to America will be a testimony. 
you remember that at some day and at some point you were on this land, the Lord remembered you and everybody blessed you. I call you blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Can I tell you something before I share the grace with you? I was, I was um, going to be ordained an archbishop. You remember that? There were so many things going on. After they made me an ambassador at the UN, I didn't want to. Now you are ambassador, his excellency, and now archbishop. When people are saying, it, especially this my bishop, yes, they get confused whether to call you archbishop or to call you his excellency. So I decided to stop it. I didn't want to be archbishop anymore. And it was too much difficulty. So many complications. And then, while I thought my dream was dead to become an archbishop, some way, somehow, one day this my big senior brother here called me. He said, Bishop, what are you doing? I said, I'm sleeping. He said, there's an organization in America. They tore up every organization here. And these organizations, Bishop T.D. Jakes, all the great bishops in America, they ordained them as bishops. Bishop, stand on the line. I said, Papa, I'm here. He connected somebody else on the line. He said, Bishop, Bishop you meet Archbishop. I said, who Archbishop? Then he introduced this, my father, to me. After we talked, I realized the man is very sweet and also very humble. Some of us, from where we are coming from, we grew up from very dirty poverty. So whether we like it or not, we are, hum we are humble by force. So when I heard his voice, I realized this man has love for humanity. After we talked a little bit, he decided just within a short time that he will come here and support what we are doing today with his wonderful wife. So this afternoon, I called a meeting of all my pastors who travel from Chicago, from everywhere in America. We had a meeting. So I, when I was introducing him, I told them that um, this is my father, the Archbishop, and this is Bishop Amankwa. Yeah, I told them that I don't know if in the future maybe I might decide to ever become an Archbishop. Then he said, no, 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 don't say that. Already our organizations, they are planning that next year, very early next year, we're going to ordain you an archbishop. You know what I want to tell you? My dream that was dead, that was sleeping. God quietly behind the scenes was putting things together for me. For all the good you came here to do, why you go sleeping? Quietly. May God quietly work things behind you. There's a scripture in the Bible in Matthew 13, I believe verse 28. He said, a man went to his farm to sow a seed, good seed. At night when everybody was asleep, his enemy went behind him to sow negative seed. But if any devil has sown negative seed in you, God is sowing positive seed inside you. I didn't hear you say amen. I said, while you are getting ready to live here, may the Lord sow a positive seed in your life. Can I hear you say a bigger amen? May the grace, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of them. Please remember tomorrow we shall be here. My father, the Archbishop, he will have enough time. I want tomorrow, I want him to lay his hands on you. So tomorrow, please, at 10.30, we're going to have church. Come to church tomorrow. Come and experience the blessing. This environment was not good for an invitation. But tomorrow, we're going to have a very powerful service. I pray that you'll be here to receive from these fathers. One wonderful thing, his wife is also a lawyer. So while we are binding the devil, we are arresting the demons. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Can you please thank somebody for me? Give, them, give five people a high five and thank them. God bless you so, 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 so much.
Please, we have a lot of finger foods out, and we will urge everybody to go out there and enjoy some. Thank you. Say what for? 